Today we're going to be looking at a channel called Minute Physics. Specifically, is it better to walk or run in the rain? Well, according to my nuclear plant occupational safety training, the answer is to walk because you're less likely to slip and fall and hurt yourself. But let's see what Minute Physics has to say about it. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear or safety related, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's get right into it. On those cold, rainy days when you forget your rain jacket or umbrella and you want to stay as dry as possible, should you walk and spend more time in the rain? Or should you run, which means you'll be hitting more raindrops from the side? Okay, so they're, so they're framing it in terms of minimizing wetness. Okay, if you're going strictly based on that, can't do the math in my head, but you're minimizing the amount of time if you're running. So assuming, again, you don't hurt yourself by falling, you're probably going to be better off running just because of the less time that you would spend in the rain. Let's see if I'm right. When you haven't been fully soaked yet and you aren't jumping into puddles, the answer is simple. As you move out of the way of one falling raindrop, you move into the way of another. So the amount of rain hitting the top of you is constant, regardless of how fast you're going. To see this, you can picture that the raindrops themselves are stationary and you and the earth beneath you are moving upwards through the rain. And since the volume of a parallelopiped, that's a 3D parallelogram, <laughs> parallel doesn't depend at all on that's a slant, funny word. then no matter how fast you're moving horizontally, the same amount of rain will land on top of you each second. Now, if you're not moving, the rain from the top is all you'll get. Okay. But if you are moving, you'll also run into raindrops from the side, and you'll get wetter. So in any given second, you stay driest by standing still, and the faster you move, the wetter you become. But if you're trying to get from point A to point B, then standing still won't do you much good. <laughs> and on route true. from point A to point B, the total amount of rain you run into from the side has nothing to do with how fast you're going. One thing I still want to point out, I know they're, they're strictly talking about wetness, but slips, trips, and falls account for about 15% of all workplace deaths, according to OSHA. And they're among the most common sorts of injuries that you would have at a nuclear power plant. It's nothing to do with radiation poisoning or radiation sickness. It's not even anything to do with your heavy industry stuff like welding or working on big valves out in the field steam exposure heat stress is up there especially at the power plant i worked at but it's things like slips trips and falls it's things like getting your fingers caught in the door these are the things that people are getting hurt from at work. Like how a snowplow will plow the same amount of snow from a stretch of road regardless of the exact speed Well, that's a good analogy. Yeah. In the case of running through the rain, you can figure that out using parallelopipeds again. So, over a given period of time, the same amount of rain will hit you from the top regardless of how fast you're going. And over a given distance, you'll hit the same amount of rain from the side, again, regardless of how fast you're going. So your total wetness is equal to the wetness per second for wetness rain from the top per times second. the amount of time you spend in the rain, <laughs> plus the wetness per meter for rain from the side times the number of meters you travel. This is actually kind of like calculating exposure, like in a radiation field, like radiation flux. And when I say flux, I'm talking about dose. So let's say neutron flux. It would be neutrons per centimeter squared per second. So it's like, yeah, he's these little cross sections of water times the time. It's it's water flux. And then you're looking at it, a, a different source of flux being from the direction you're traveling versus the direction that's coming above you. So you're basically having two sources, two different directions it's coming from. Technically, it's more than two if you get into like the exact plane that you're looking at it. But anyway, that's it's interesting that it's, it's the same mindset of trying to uh, minimize dose, except you're trying to minimize the amount of wetness. That's a fun analogy. To stay driest, getting from one point to another, you should try to minimize the amount of water falling onto you from above. And quite simply, that means getting out of the rain as fast as possible. And this makes sense with the context of Alara. So when minimizing radiation dose, it's time, distance, and shielding. Well, in this scenario, you have no shielding. You have no umbrella. That's part of it. And the distance is fixed. You're trying to get from point A to point B. So the only thing you can control is time. So minimize your time. 100% agree with this. At least from a perspective of trying to minimize your amount of wetness. 
That was a cool one. One other interesting fact is that there is no OSHA requirement about rain specifically. There is about lightning. That's a different story. This, But this scenario didn't really talk about lightning. For lightning, it's during a lightning proximity alert, no work on outside elevated structures, which makes sense. But it's all about just wearing whatever protective equipment it would be whether raincoats umbrellas boots so again i will emphasize you still shouldn't run in the rain <laughs> i still feel like as a safety sharing professional i should say i should not recommend running in the rain just because of the risk of injury but if it was impossible for you to slip then sure you're gonna get less wet thank you very much for watching i'll see you next time